Now let's talk about some formula expressions. So if we can recall what a formula is, a formula is just a combination of operators and operands that yields a specific result. So down here I have an example of a formula, which is 8 times 2 plus 5, which yields a result of 21. So now what are operators and what are operands? Operators perform operations on operands, and operands are just the values that are used in the operation. So if we think of something like the plus operator, the operands are just the values being added together, and the operator is just plus or addition. Operators can take different numbers of operands. If we take one operand, it's known as a unary operator. If we take two operands, it's known as a binary operator. And lastly, if we take three operands, it's known as a ternary operator. Operators can be evaluated from left to right or from right to left. So if we think of something like addition again, we evaluate it from left to right because we take the value to the left of the operator, then we take the value to the right of the operator, and then we add them together and return the result. So we are evaluating from left to right. While something like assignment is evaluated from right to left, we take the value to the right of the operator and assign it to the variable on the left of the operator. Operators also have an order of evaluation. So if we think back to a system like BedMaps, which tells us that in formal mathematics, operations like division and multiplication will always be performed before addition and subtraction regardless of their order in the expression, assuming that there are no brackets. In our terms, we're saying that operations like multiplication and division have higher precedence than operations like addition and subtraction. BedMass also tells us that there are operations that have equal precedence, so like multiplication and division. And what determines the order of evaluation in that case is the order in which these operations appear in the expression. So I have this example expression here, 5 plus 3 times 8 divided by 2. If we try to use bed mass, we can see that we have addition, multiplication, and division. We know that by the operator precedence of bed mass, multiplication and division always come first, and multiplication and division have the same precedence. So since 3 times 8 comes up first, since multiplication comes up first, we evaluate 3 times 8, which is 24. Then we have the new expression 5 plus 24 divided by 2. And we know that division has a higher precedence than addition, so we do 24 divided by 2 next, which is 12. And lastly, we do 5 plus 12, which is 17. Now that we have an example under our belt, we can apply this same system to C, since the operators have an order of evaluation. As you can see, I have this table down here, and in this table, we have multiple cells. The further up you go in the cells, the higher the precedence. That means the earlier they get evaluated. And if the operators are in the same cell, that means that they have equal precedence. So the order of evaluation is determined by the order in which the operators appear in the expression. So let's quickly talk about the arithmetic operators in C. As you can probably notice, I have these print statements where I'm using all of the arithmetic operators in C. So let's quickly run through all of them. So first we have unary minus, which just takes its right operand and makes it a negative. So in this case, we get negative five. Then we have addition, just adds its two operands together. Subtraction, subtracts its left operand by its right operand. Multiplication, multiplies its operands together. Modulo, takes its left operand, divides it by its right operand and returns the result of the remainder. And then there's division, which just divides its left operand by its right operand. As you can see, I have this comment here saying, be careful with float and int. So what I'm trying to say is that when we write a whole number value, like five or two, it's automatically assumed to be an integer. So if I hover over it, it says integer. Uh, but if I add a fractional part, like this point zero, then it's automatically assumed to be a double or a 64-bit floating point type. This is an important distinction to make because the results that we get from this will differ. So let's try running this code. So as you can see, when I compile this code, I get this warning message that we're expecting to print out a floating point type, but we're actually supplying an integer when we do this five divided by two operation. But we know that five divided by two is 2.5. So what's going on here? So if you consider the types float and int, 
we can see that float is more general than integer because float can hold any integer value and any fractional value, while integer can only hold whole number values. So when one type is more general than another, we say that the more general type has a higher rank. And when we perform an operation between two values, the result will be of the highest rank out of its operand. So when we do this operation, 5 divided by 2, we have two integers and divide them together. So the result will be an integer type because the highest rank is integer. And in here, in this 5.0 divided by 2, the highest rank is 5.0, which or the highest rank is a floating point type, meaning that the result will be a floating point type. So let's print out the results. As you can see, everything here makes sense except for the second last one, this one right here. And this is because we're trying to interpret a integer as a floating point type. So let's fix that really quickly. As you can see, now we're printing out two. And this is because, like I said, the result has to be of the highest rank between its operands. And since that's an integer, we have to return a whole number. But when we do the operation 5.0 divided by 2, we get 2.5, which is the value we expect. And this is because the rank is now a floating point type. So now let's talk about the assignment operator. If we remember, the assignment operator in C is this equal sign. In C, the equal sign does not test equality. It assigns a value to a variable. And for us to use the assignment operator, we actually have to provide an L value to the left operand of the assignment operator. And what an L value is, it's anything that has an, a memory address. So in general, just think of this as anything that can store values. And as you can see, we've created the variable here in line five. And note that we actually have to tell it the type of data that we're going to be storing into here. The, so in C, the type of data is important. It matters. So as you can see in here, we're assigning the value five. We're assigning the, the right operand to the variable on the left operand. And now it's a good time to discuss the side effects of operators. All the operators that we've seen before have not altered the value of its operands, but assignment does. Assignment changes the value of a left operand or affects its left operand by assigning it with the value we put as the right operand. And in here, we're just printing out the value of X. And as you can see in line 10, I'm just printing the value of X after we've assigned the value five to it. And in line 11, I'm printing, I'm again printing the value of X, but what I'm entering in is X equals seven. As I said beforehand, every operator returns a value. So the assignment operator is no exception. It does return a value and that is the number or the value that we've assigned to the variable. So in here, we will be returning seven. Let's run the program to see what the output is so far. So ignore the bottom two print statements. Let's just focus on the ones above here. Uh, as you can see, I am printing out the value of X when we've assigned it the value of five. And then I printed out the value of X equals seven, which like I said before, is just the value we're assigning to our variable. And now let's move on to promotion. So promotion is when we assign a value of a lower rank to something of a type that's a higher rank. So in here we have five, which is an integer, and we're assigning it to something of a higher rank like float. And here, if when I print this out, as you can see, I get the value 5.0. So we've added this fractional component at the end. And now let's talk about degradation. Degradation is the opposite of promotion. And it's when we take something of a higher rank and we turn it into, or we assign it to something of a lower rank. And when we degrade something, we actually have to tell C specifically that we want this to happen. And we do this through something called casting. And to cast a value to another type, you prefix the value with the type we want to convert it into surrounded in brackets. So in here, I'm converting 4.9 into an integer, and we're going to be assigning this to an integer. And as you can see, when we do this, 
we just drop the fractional component and we print out the whole number part, which is four. Note that promotion and degradation can cause errors in your program. So now let's talk about compound assignment. So as you can see, I have written out these following expressions and I've also written what these lines translate to. So they are essentially just a shortcut for performing operations on a variable. So now let's talk about the increment and decrement prefix and postfix, also known as the pre and post increment operators and the pre and post decrement operators. So this first one here in line 27 is the post increment operator, which returns a value of x and then performs x equals x plus 1. And then in line 28, we have the post decrement operator, which is the same thing as the post increment, except we subtract one instead of add one. And then there's the pre increment operator, which adds one to x first, or which performs x equals x plus one first, and then returns the value of x. And then there's the pre decrement operator, which again performs x equals x minus one first, and then returns the value of x. And lastly, let's talk about expression statements. So in C, we can make any expression a statement by adding a semicolon to the end. So we can say something like 5 plus 3 and add a semicolon. But this is not very useful because while we are doing something, the result is discarded and there are no side effects. So nothing is altered and the result is discarded. But there are some useful expressions that are still useful once we turn them into statements. So as you can see, a plus equals five is an expression that when made to a statement, it's still useful because it does change the value of a. And as you can see, when I try to run this program, I get a warning message that we've written an expression that results in a unused result. So the result of five plus three is discarded and we get a warning for this. But we don't get a warning for an expression like this because it does do something useful. So if we try running this, as you can see, first we're printing the value of a, which is five. And then after the expression, we've incremented a to be 10. And when we print it out, it is indeed 10. The gist of this point is when you're making an expression into a statement, make sure that it has a side effect.